This is a quick guide to cast, prime and paint the new Prince August Caroliner release of moulds. First apply talc to both sides of the rubber mould. Make sure the talc is dry. Then take both sides and clap them gently together a few times to remove the excess talc. Once you've done that, assemble them with the support boards and you can use elastic bands or clamps. We're using four clamps here in this demonstration. I advise clamping near the edges of the mold so that you avoid squeezing the part of the mold that you're actually pouring the metal in through. This allows better detail and a better flow of metal. Using preheated metal in our ladle, we now pour swiftly but cleanly into the mold holes. Try to fill it up as high as possible, if you can, up to the top. Tapping the mold helps get rid of air pockets and settle the metal. Normally it takes about five minutes for the metal to cool. If you open it too early, the figure is still a bit soft and could result in the figure breaking. Simply dismantle your mold by slowly taking off the clamps and the support boards and then peeling back the two halves of the mold. I recommend bending the mold in order to pop out the figures without risking damage to the figures or the mold. Using a wire snips, you can then remove any of the excess metal, including the ingates, which are required, and you can remelt this metal at any time, so there's no waste involved. Flashing is caused by insufficient pressure on areas of the mould, resulting in metal leaking slightly from the figure into the seams of the partition of the moulds. You can either cut this off or remelt the figure and remove the clamp slightly to adjust the pressure. Priming is an essential part of the painting process. It acts as the initial layer for the rest of the paint to have something to hold on to on a normally slippy surface of metal. Take your figures outside, leave them on a board rather than holding them, and shake the can for a few minutes to make sure that the mix is evenly spread, and then spray between 8 to 10 inches away from the figure, evenly on both sides. You can then stand the figure up and spray it one more time on each side for an even coat. First we're going to start with skin tone. It's already pre-mixed with Villager paints, so you don't have to try and make it from scratch. Uh, apply it to the hands and face and any other areas that the normal skin would be exposed. Next, paint the coat dark blue. Try to paint it in as even a layer as possible so you don't end up with brush strokes. You can also apply a second layer if you feel the first layer was too thin. Try to avoid going into areas that will later be painted yellow, because obviously if you mix blue and yellow you will end up with a shade of green, which is, is something you should certainly want to avoid in this paint scheme. You can use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process between layers, and this does no harm whatsoever to the paint job. The inside shirt or garment should be painted black. It's only visible at the neck. Dilute the black now and go back to the coat and apply an even wash of this black over all the blue that you applied on earlier. This black will settle into any creases and will give a much better depth for the paint job. Now it's time to apply the yellow. You're going to be applying the yellow to the trousers, the inside upturns of the coats and cuffs and collars of the jacket itself. Try to avoid going over on top of the blue again if possible. You can always touch it up if you really need to. Don't worry if you get some yellow on the pole of the weapon or on the shoes or any other unpainted area. 
since yellow is so light you can always paint over it with a darker color and blot it out so it's not a big concern next paint the hair flat brown if that's the shade of hair you wish to apply to this soldier Now paint the belt at his waist a green ochre and also extend that down to the straps that hold the scabbard in place. The weapon is called a partisan or a short pike. Paint the pole of that mahogany brown. Everyone has a different way of painting eyes. Here we apply a small line of brown and then two dots of white on each side of the pupil. Going back to the soldier's hair, we now apply a wash of black over the brown to once again enhance the detail and let the black settle in any creases. Next paint the tricorn hat of the soldier totally black. Remember to paint the insides and the rims of this black also. The soldier's shoes need to be also painted totally black. You can always paint over the black with a metallic color later. Now paint the belt buckle and the hilt of the sword brass. The head of the partisan or short pike should also be painted brass. Now paint the rim of the tricorn hat silver or you can also use oily steel if you wish. Paint the buckles on the black shoes of the soldier silver. Paint the blade of the sword with oily steel. Finally paint the base the soldier is standing on with black green. Once that's dry, you can also paint the rim of the base black if you wish. And that concludes our painting guide for the new release of Carolina Moles by Prince August. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go to our website at www.princeaugust.ie for more.